We allow many countries around the world, by treaty, we give them nuclear reactors. We give them the uranium that we made in Oak Ridge. Their part of the bargain is that they give us the fuel when it's finished. So we can separate out the plutonium and they don't get it. So in exchange for giving them nuclear technology and giving them the uranium, we get back the plutonium. Uh, we don't want them to have it because then they could build a bomb. When Iran says we are no longer allowing inspection of our facilities, we are turning off the cameras. The UN can no longer watch us. The reason we fear that is they now can take the material out of their nuclear reactors, remove it without us knowing, reprocess it, and get plutonium. A friend of mine, Mike May, went to North Korea so that they could demonstrate to him that they had done reprocessing and they, ha they, they handed him a piece of plutonium. He said, can I take it out of the jar and feel it? They said, sure. Took it out of the jar, could feel the plutonium. It was warm. It was about the right warmth for plutonium. Wasn't he worried about the radioactivity? No, because he knows you've got to breathe this stuff in for it to be dangerous. So he wasn't worried about that. He washed his hands afterwards. <laughs> But he wasn't really worried about, about, but he could tell it was warm, about the right warmth, because he'd worked with plutonium before. So North Korea is doing this reprocessing. Reprocessing means you go into the reactor and you remove the plutonium. Now, what's the big deal about nuclear reactors? So let me talk about that now. Let's talk about reactor accidents. About what happened at Chernobyl, or what happened, what, what is it that people worry about? Question there. Oh, they, yeah, why couldn't terrorists grow, blow up one of our reactors? Boy, I sure hope they try. I really hope they try. This is a whole story behind this. I don't want to digress right now. Maybe I'll go into that uh, uh, on Thursday or, 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 or next Tuesday. Um, I've actually visited a, a nuclear reactor down in Southern California with a counter-terrorist group. The counter-terrorist group had planned an attack on the reactor, and they went down there because the... I went with them because the uh, people who were defending the reactor had their counter plan. And the question was, how would it really work if they came in and tried to invade this reactor? Would the, would the plan really work? And I was just as impressed as hell with the details of this, how they had protected this reactor against an attack. It, they did such a good job that I realized, boy, if you're a nuclear terror, if you're a terrorist, you want to blow up an apartment building and in Chicago, using natural gas, you don't want to go after a nuclear reactor. It's so much easier. So, a long story on that, but let me let me. That's the quick answer. Yes. Well, you don't give them fully enriched. You give them three percent enriched, and that you can't use that for a bomb because you won't get a chain reaction. The uranium two thirty eight is there. This is getting to the issue of the nuclear explosion. In order for somebody to go off like a nuclear explosion, you can't have the uranium-238. But, but wait a minute, you can if you have a moderator, right? So maybe this thing will explode like a nuclear bomb. No, this cannot explode for a nuclear bomb for the same reason it works with unenriched uranium. This is a tricky thing. Really wake up now and pay attention. Everybody. There's a key thing here. In order to work, with, with reactor-grade uranium, only 3%, you have to have the moderator. Otherwise, the uranium-238 eats up all the neutrons. If you have a moderator, you have slow neutrons. That means the chain reaction is slow. It comes out, it wanders around, and then it finally finds another uranium. Boom! Out comes two of them. One of them goes to plutonium, the other is wandering around. Finally, it's a slow thing because of the moderator. Because it's slow, Suppose you start to overheat. This happened in Chernobyl. In Chernobyl, they had a graphite reactor, a very badly designed graphite reactor. It started to overheat. It had a positive temperature coefficient. Nothing like that would ever be made legal in any country that had any kind of oversight. Positive temperature coefficient means that when it gets hotter, it starts reacting faster. That's absolutely illegal in the United States and every other rational country, but it wasn't in, in the Soviet Union. So the reactor started going faster and faster. It still had the moderator, because without the moderator, it wouldn't work. But it got going so fast that it got up to the energy density of TNT. 
Now at that point, in the atomic bomb, the reaction is going so fast, because it has fast neutrons, that, th that before the thing can blow itself apart, the reaction doubles, 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 and you've released all the energy of all the atoms before the thing can flow it, throw itself apart. In Chernobyl, once it got up to the density of TNT, the thing exploded, and we never got a nuclear explosion. You can't get a nuclear explosion. You can't get the factor of a million if you have slow neutrons. But you need slow neutrons or the reactor won't work at all. So what happens in these things is the Chernobyl nuclear rea reactor blew up like as if it were loaded with TNT. There was an explosion, but not a nuclear explosion, not an atomic bomb type explosion, just a pure dynamite explosion. Well, what's so bad about that? Well, 36,000 people dead is what's the result of that. Why is that? Because it's not the explosion that killed people. What happened is the explosion set the graphite on fire. And the graphite started to burn. Now, what's the problem with that? What's the big deal about a fire? The problem is all these fission fragments that are in these pellets, they're highly radioactive. Those are the things you want to take out, and you'd like to remove the plutonium from them. You'd like to bury them underground somewhere. But instead, they go up in the smoke. So this highly radioactive stuff is going up in the smoke. And that's what then spread over the city of Chernobyl and all the way up to Sweden. And when you calculate it, as I said, you'll never see these deaths because they're a tiny fraction of the other cancer deaths. But uh, when you, but, but, but we calculate 36,000 real people, each one of whom is probably a nice person. And they're dead because of this. They would have lived longer. So it's a real tragedy, 36,000 real deaths. And it came about because of a reactor accident that ran away would never blow up like a nuclear bomb because it uses moderated neutrons. If, if the neutrons aren't moderated, then the chain reaction stops because then they're absorbed on the uranium-238. You can't have both. To make it work with slightly enriched uranium, reactor-grade uranium, you have to use slow neutrons. If you use slow neutrons, the thing can't explode. Well, it can explode a little bit, enough to set the thing on fire and spread this radioactivity. That's what happened. You know, once this thing had the explosion, the chain reaction stopped. 1985, was it? 86? Uh, the Soviet Union was in the beginning of the era of Glasnost. I had been there shortly before that and had made four trips to the Soviet Union. The Glasnost thing was very exciting. They were doing their best to be open like the U.S. was. And uh, they announced that they had this accident uh, and, and the chain reaction had stopped. And the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee at that point said, another blatant lie from the Soviet Union. Anybody who knows anything knows the chain reaction hasn't stopped. And I go, I start crying. <laughs> it's part of the inspiration for this course. If any of you has ever head of the Senate Intelligence Committee, you will know the chain, they weren't lying. Here he is publicly accusing them in front of the world of lying, and everybody who knew anything technical knew that he was wrong. Of course the chain, what, so why did he say that? Well, he was probably confusing the chain reaction with the radioactivity of the fission fragments. Of course there's a lot of radioactivity in there. Everybody knows that doesn't stop, and that's the danger. But the chain reaction had stopped, which is all that they had said.